Hello! It's Plague Von Karma. I made a Gen 1 mod that's now available on the Dragon Heaven Pokemon Showdown side server. You can play it right now. It's slated to be updated with content from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet soon, with a few Pokemon really shaking things up, so let's go ahead and get right into it. The Kanto Expansion Pack is a modification to Pokemon Showdown's Gen 1 package. It adds cross generation evolutions, regional variants, and even beta Pokemon, all while ensuring that RBIU's lines of play do not fundamentally change. So I'd like to chance your main top tier, Tauro stays as one of the best revenge killers, Alakazam and Starmie remain competitive, and so on. It's also designed to be compatible with any Gen 1 format, so I encourage you to experiment and have a good time. Anything from overused, to monotype, to whatever, it's always going to have a way of working. This is a razor's edge balancing act, but I am very proud of a year of work poured into it. Expect to see new faces like Rhyperia, Galarian Zapdos, Sandy Shocks, and Omega. Let's talk about the biggest change, the type additions. So immediately, you're probably wondering. Hey, Plague, some of these Pokemon you're adding have types that aren't in Generation 1. And indeed, you're correct. That's why this mod adds them in. Now, for those familiar with Generation 1, you're about to talk about how these types ruin everything and the world is going to end. Hold your horses, hold your horses. When adding Dark and Steel, instead of going the standard route of making them like they are now, I decided to make them have their Space World 1997 incarnations, or in layman's terms, Pokemon Gold and Silver's pre-release ones. These are not only close to Generation 1, but were also produced prior to the significant nerf Psychic and Normal would receive later, as a result of a national tournament held at the same event that demo was showed at. These older revisions are more of a slap on the wrist, and thus do a good job of preserving the RBY feel. As a result, these types aren't just balanced, they are also historically accurate. As you'll see, Dark is weak to Normal, which drastically changes how it operates. It's less of a definitive answer to Psychic, which, for the sake of that Gen 1 feel, is desirable. With Galarian Moltres having Nasty Plot, which is an Amnesia clone in this mod, it goes from the best Pokemon in the game into something firmly balanced. With this weakness, however, you can now reliably revenge kill it with a Hyper Beam or something like that, meaning it actually has to really work for that sweep. And that's far more competitive and accurate to Cantonian Moltres' playstyle, which has the same issues. Steel is also very different. I'd describe it as an inverse rock type. It's generally very weak, having mostly neutral coverage, while being countered by electric and water types very hard. It's pretty bad, but it's best to be consistent with Dark and not hit Pokemon like Snorlax too much. While initially seen as pretty terrible, it turns out that Galarian Zapdos is really good in this meta game, so it's been seeing usage for its fighting resistance. With Bell Battle's recent addition to the game, though, it may see even higher usage for its offensive qualities as well. Thunder Wave plus Iron Head is a pretty amazing combination. Ah, and Fairy is the same as in modern generations. Due to its status as a type that's answering metagame calls that don't exist yet, it's pretty whatever. It has pretty much neutral coverage, though, so you could say it's sort of like the modern Ghost type offensively now. Let's move on. Naturally, these types all needed moves to support them, as I've implied, which were added alongside the new Pokemon to freshen them up. These moves all have effects that can be directly translated to RBY, they must be absolutely congruent. For example, Iron Head has a 30% chance to flinch, so that's been imported and distributed among Pokemon, but Dark Pulse, which has a 20% chance to flinch, hasn't. Likewise, Night Slash has an increased critical hit ratio, so that's been added and will crit all the time given how RBY works. Over 20 moves have been added and given to new Pokemon, as you can see here. But you're not here for that, are you? Let's get to the Pokemon. In Gen 1, Special Attack and Special Defense are one singular special stat. To import later Gen Pokemon, I followed their progression and pulled the stat that is equivalent to this old special stat. For example, Primeape has 60 Special, which is split into 60 Special Attack and 70 Special Defense in Generation 2. Thus, when importing Annihilate, which has 50 Special Attack and 90 Special Defense, I gave it 50 Special to match. This is applied for all Pokemon except Porygon Z, which was... Very, very weird, to say nothing else. Anyway, let's move on to examples of what's been imported. So, let's begin with cross-generation evolutions. What are these? These are evolutions added to Gen 1 Pokemon after the fact. For example, Steelix evolves from Onyx, so it's in the mod, giving it a new lease on life. It's finally able to use moves like Bind and Explosion with actual stats to support teams sublimely. The idea of cross-generation evolutions extends even to Pokemon like Berserker, which evolves from a regional form of Meowth. That's not all though, this means your favourite evolutions are playable too. Out of all of these Pokemon though, Rhyperia is a popular choice for beginners, giving some central buff to the popular Starmie plus Rhydon team. Yep, you can get into this mod simply by upgrading your old teams. 
Overall though, I think my favourite addition personally is Tangrowth, which fixes most of Tangela's issues. Tangrowth has a BST higher than even Executor in this mod because of how we imported a special stat, but requires a good bit of momentum to get going offensively. It also has a nasty Blizzard weakness, which really dampens things. However, its consistency of spreading status and ability to use Swords Dance or Bind give it a formidable amount of things to do. So far, it's been seeing healthy usage, with Executor still being more popular on offensive teams though. With these uh, evolutions though, we also got the biggest source of brokenness. Blissey, Licky Licky, and the two Porygons end up being extremely powerful during development. I didn't want to just nerf them or make a strange rule that banned the use of Pokemon from the same evolution line, so I ended up expanding Ubers instead. Yep, these Pokemon all end up getting banned. The Kanto expansion doesn't just take cases to fully evolve Pokemon though. Want a more interesting Little Cup? The truckload of bait Pokemon that GSC added are just as available as the rest. Want to try an NFE format? Yep, those exist too, with tier changes made to account for the new status of Kanto's finest. Rhydon, Raichu, and Electabuzz are all potential new threats, and it looks pretty insane. And that's not all, my friend. All regional variants have been imported as well. This includes faces like LL and Ninetales of Muck, the Galaria Birds, and even History and Arcanine. These add some neat new options to the game, making Monotype more playable thanks to unique new Pokemon like Alone and Executor. As if that wasn't cool enough, you also get to use three more Tauros. Oh, it's so, so beautiful. So far, players have been experimenting the most with Galarian Zapdos, as I've implied before. A Pokemon which I gave a lot of Gen 1 fighting type moves to make up for it learning basically nothing otherwise. While weak to Psychic and thus having many targets on his back, access to High Jump Kick is huge, letting it hit the big three for massive damage. With access to moves like Rolling Kick as well, it's also great at power flinching weakened targets if it's concerned about an opponent striking back. Drill Pack is also helpful for Executor and Tag Growth, which can otherwise be very annoying resists. Likewise, with the release of Pokemon Scarlet to Violet, the Convergent Pokemon, Toad's Cruel and Wog Trio, have also been added. These have been added for similar reasons to the regional birds. In practical terms, they're about as Kanto adjacent as them. While Wog Trio is about as bad as you'd expect, Toad's Cruel is likely to expand Ubers once again, with a combination of Spore, Rap, Ridiculous Speed, and a Thunder Wave immunity, making it far too powerful for the game to handle. It's basically the perfect Pokemon in Gen 1 environment, while apparently in Scarlet and Violet it's pretty bad. During the infamous Nintendo Giga Leak in 2018, the back sprites for many scrap Pokemon were leaked from their database. We had the front sprites for a good few of these for a while, though others have been speculated on extensively. These details were revealed properly via ROM hack during the Pokéthon livestream for charity, which made custom front sprites that I requested permission for to use in this mod, and was provided this. So I've taken these Pokemon and given them sprucing up to make them usable in the Kanto expansion, designed to be somewhat competitive and improve type diversity. I have remained true to their source material, ensuring they are as realistic as possible and have moves that reflect what's known about them. There are 32 of them, so I can't go over each in detail, but I'll share some of my favourites. There's also a spreadsheet in the description if you want something more elaborate. Omega conveniently looks like a Mecha Godzilla, which encouraged me to make it into a blue collar steel type. With Explosion, Thunder Wave, and some interesting coverage under its belt, it's been seeing usage as a strong check to Galarian Zapdos while having strong utility otherwise. Its weaknesses to Water and Electric hold it back, but it's been doing pretty well, all things considered. Trampel, the beta Indian elephant, has been redesigned into a bulky physical attacker that uses Substitute effectively. The normal type cannot be paralyzed by Body Slam, and the ground type is immune to Thunder Wave, so many Pokemon will struggle to wrestle it down with paralysis. With high HP alongside this, it's one of the best Substitute users of the game, notably outrunning Chansey and Executor too. However, it's also very weak to Blizzard, and Substitute doesn't block status itself in RPY, so it should stay away from users of Sleep Powder as Sunspot. Gorotora, the final evolution of Korotora, has been made into a bulky electric type, actualizing a niche Jolteon could use, but was inconsistent at performing. Jolteon is a bit frail and thus tends to get cheesed by critical hits and paralysis against Zapdos on occasion, and when using rest, it's difficult to wake up. Gorotora aims to address these issues while not being overbearing, acting as a Pokemon that has less special offense, but better bulk and stab less physical offense to offset it. If you use a Jolteon specifically to beat Zapdos and want to get into the mod, upgrading it to use Gorotora is a great way to start. If slow and steady isn't your style though, Gorochu probably would be. An infamously cut Raichu evolution, Gorochu soups up its stats to make itself into a firm OU contender. Being as fast as Taurus and having Surf for coverage, Gorochu could slam dunk teams that tried to use Rhyperior to take it out. Interestingly, because we added Pichu to this mod as well, we've actually got a 4 stage evolution line. We've also added Kanto related Pokemon from the Space World demo to match the use of a type chart. Parakasu and Madamu are very fun Pokemon to use with the latter having one of the strongest slashes in the game. It can really do some damage to paralysis support, it's kind of scary. New to the Scarlet of Violet update, the ancient Screamtail and Sandy Shocks have been pulled from the past. 
They don't have that bonkers ability that's really tearing up overuse, but they do look really cool, don't they? Screamtail, unfortunately, imports a lower special stat to match Jigglypuff in the first generation, so it's probably not going to make a large impact. However, Sandy Shox is slated to pack a serious punch, possessing the coveted ground typing, so it could swap in on Thunder Wave attempts. This makes it comically good at switching in against opposing Electric types, and it even has the coverage to just smoke them. Anything swapping in on Selectric Stab is going to have a bad time if you get hit by Earthquake. I know that many Gen 1 fans try and fail to make Magnetar work, so maybe this is finally going to be its big break, eh? For fans of Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, we've recently had a vote in the server about bringing in Melmetal, and it won in a landslide. Effectively a post hobbit addition to the Kanto Pokedex, Melmetal is this mod's blue collar steel type, actualizing what it truly means to be the type in this mod, alongside Omega. While lacking its beloved double iron bash to stay consistent with the game's added effects pool, its base stat total exceeds every Pokemon in the tier and is sure to compete in spite of the steel type's weaknesses this time around. Thunder Wave plus Iron Head is more than likely to be an infuriating thing to fight, and I'm very excited to see how people deal with it. That's all for today though. The Cancer Expansion Pack makes for a fun mod to play if you're already included to how Gen 1 works. The typical big three core of Tauros, Chansey, and Snorlax remain a dominant force in an OU environment, but with so many new options, including more formats to play, team building becomes much more interesting. In fact, all of the big three are at least a little bit droppable now, except maybe Chansey. Once the new update is released within the next couple of weeks, you can even choose your own brand of Tauros for the occasion. Isn't that brilliant? Many people have theorised about how Gen 1 Pokemon would work if their later generation counterparts came into the game, and now, you have that opportunity! Why don't you join the RPY and Cap Discords and find some games? This was Plague Karma, and I'll see you all next time.